Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. Do the same with the Grizzly Gentleman, 10% off at checkout on your fantastic beard products. Or you could shop via the TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below to help support the show. And last, but of course not least, you can go to Grey Viking Games with the uh, affiliate link below to pillage some sweet arena codes. What is up, Planeswalkers? Through Six Back with some Magic the Gathering uh, Commander discussion. I was hoping to have uh, the deck tech that you all voted on uh, today. However, uh, my order is going to get in tonight. It, it did not give me enough time. If it was getting in, like, early afternoon, I would have used it. But, unfortunately, we didn't, so I had to pivot to one of the other topics I wanted to talk about. Uh, so, last week's video, I was talking about my thoughts on Soul Ring and its friends. And this week, I'm going to talk about, uh, essentially, hybrid in Commander. And the reason, uh, one of the reasons I've talked about this is because a Query, over in the Discord channel, by the way, links in the description, um, asked a question, essentially, similar to how dual mana symbols are not allowed in monocolored decks, do you think that making it so that colorless decks can only, er, uh, colorless cards can only be played in colorless decks, uh, would, would that make the format more fun or interesting? So I'm not going to answer that question directly because then it'll spoil the entire video. But instead, I'm going to talk about seven cards and my thoughts on how I think uh, Commander should at least be explored. So we're going to start with the, the main one. Hybrid cards in monocolor decks or even multiple color, color decks that don't include both of the colors. So for the longest time, I was on the side of Kitchen Finks can only be played in decks that have both a green and a white uh, color identity. I've changed on that. I looked through the hybrid cards, and I don't actually think any of them would be an issue. Additionally, the reasons that these are made, as opposed to traditional multicolored cards, so a white, um, green, or sorry, a one green white uh, Kitchen Finks is different from a one Selesnia Selesnia Kitchen Finks, is because they're meant to be able to play, be played in monocolored versions of those decks. That's like that's the entire focus. So I think that it would actually be fine if EDH allowed for hybrid symbols in mana costs to be played in decks that have at least one of those cards uh, color identity. So Kitchen Finks then would be able to play uh, be played in mono green, mono white, Selesnia, or any com any uh, other color combination that includes one of those three color identities. So it would be able to be played in um, Jund, it would be able to be played in Mardu but it would also just be able to pl be played in bands, right? There is some, like, idea of pushback is, like, that's changing fundamentally how EDH works. The, the main issue with that is, is it really? Like, the idea of these cards is that these effects could be, this Kitchen Fix, for example, could be a mono-white card, or it could be a mono-green card. That is what Wizards has stated is the purpose of these hybrid cards. They can, they could be printed, as monocolored cards, and you could just say, well, why doesn't Witcher just print them as monocolored cards? Well, because of the context of the set they were developed in, they had to be uh, made like this. Whatever. Additionally, there there aren't any combinations uh, that popped out to me, at least, um, that would say that these cards uh, would, like, break EDH in any way, right? When, when EDH has a bunch of free spells that were printed by Wizards of the Coast, I don't think adding a Kitchen Finks to my mono-white uh, uh, EDH deck is going to matter, right? These are, these are generally speaking, cards that aren't going to necessarily uh, do two stupid things. Sure, you can play Divinity, uh, Divinity of Pride in a mono-white life gain deck, and you're making that mono-white deck a little bit better, sure. Uh, you can play Noblest of War in a mono-red deck, or in a, a red-green deck, for all, for all that matters. Th that's not going to um, harm the format more than any of the other, like, nonsense cards that I'll talk about in another video. Um, that are currently legal and see play from time to time or just aren't played because people don't like to play with them, right? So I, I don't see that being an issue. But then that, that does open us to potentially some arguments of Slippery Slope. The first card I want to talk about from this Slippery Slope is actually Garrick Relentless. So my red-green Planeswalker deck is a, um, or sorry, my red-green EDH deck is Werewolves. I'm super excited for Innistrad uh, uh, Werewolves, Vampires, sure, sure, who cares, but I'm super excited for, um, I believe, this autumn uh, for the <laughs> for the Werewolf set. The issue is that red-green, you can't play Garrick Relentless. Now, on the front side, you might be like, well, why is that the case? It's just, it's green, it's just green, right? Why can't you just play that? It's because the backside has a green and black color indicator. 
The thing is, this color indicator is different than the hybrid mana symbols. I, I admit that, and I understand that. However, the mana used to cast this card is mono green. In my approximation, this card should be allowed to be in any deck that has green in its color identity. But I don't believe that this should be allowed in mono black decks. And you might be saying, that's just <clears throat> too confusing. It's wild. Like, that doesn't make sense. It's not consistent with what you said about Kitchen Finks. I think it's entirely consistent. Uh, obviously, I'm the one who uh, thought of it. But <clears throat> the reason being is, one, this is the face of the card. It's, it's the front face. Like, this is the card as is in your deck. And two, you, you don't, you're not paying any black mana for this. Like, this card, you're only ever paying green mana for this, right? Um, I mean, that's that's essentially it. Now, I could, I would understand if someone said, no, this is a green-black card. Like, this is a Golgari card because you have to take into consideration both faces. Fun fact, though, uh, the CMC, I think it's, I think they might have changed it such that the actual mana cost of this card double face cards man um I, I can't remember exactly how the rule was um but it used to be that the uh flipped flipped cards like this had no uh no cmc i think it's the case that at least they have this this the cmc that uh is on the front side i'm not sure if it has the mana cost as well so i don't know if this is just a four cmc planeswalker that happens to be black and green or if it is a four mana planeswalker that happens to be black and green with an actual mana cost of three and a green. I'm not entirely sure. That said, um, I would accept both situations, but you always have to come back with EDH of rule zero, right? I've asked people if I can play with Garrick Relentless because it makes a lot of sense in the context of the deck. It's a werewolf deck. This makes, it's a wolf and werewolf deck. This makes wolves and it also flips like by itself. Cool. Um, there are some other like green, black Garricks that I can't play in the deck. They, you cost black to uh, to cast them. This one doesn't. Uh, and if your group allows it, that's kind of all that matters. But I'm talking about more for the the entirety of EDH. And I think that um, it, it would be fine if Garrick Relentless were played in mono green decks or uh, green red decks or uh, green blue decks even. But what about Beseech the Queen? Now, I've heard people call Beseech the Queen hybrid mana. I wouldn't call it that. These are twos, which are generic. They're not even colorless mana. You don't have to spend colorless mana to cast Beseech the Queen. You have to spend black or generic. Any color is not the same as a specific color or specifically colorless. As such, I don't believe that Beseech the Queen should be allowed to, uh, should be, allowed to be played in any decks that do not have black in its color identity. Because Beseech the Queen in a mono blue deck is not the same as Kitchen Finks in mono white. Kitchen Finks in mono white, you have white here. Garrick Relentless in mono green, you only have green here. Beseech the Queen, you only have black in generic, right? This is fundamentally no different than um, Diabolic Tutor. Just because uh, you can uh, change the amount to which you are using generic mana doesn't mean uh, that this card is any less of a mono black card. Again, you'll be saying, well, okay, but now you have to make the commander rules like super confusing. Like you can use hybrid mana, but you can't use hybrid mana. Then like, where does Phyrexian mana come into play here? Uh, Phyrexian mana doesn't come into play anywhere. Those are, you can pay, it's the same thing with this. Like you can pay two life for it, but, um, uh, 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 Gitaxian Probe. Dismember, that's the card I was thinking of. Dismember, in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do, a, do a duplicate. And we're just going to do Dismember so we can talk about Dismember as well. Um, dismember is still just black. Yes, you could pay two life for this, but this is not hybrid. This isn't Phyrexian hybrid mana. This is Phyrexian mana. This isn't hybrid mana. It's too generic or a black. Also, the card's converted mana cost is six, which is hilarious. Um, yeah, like this, this is not just because you can pay two life for this instead of black doesn't mean that it makes sense for this to be in a mono blue deck. I'm hoping those make sense. I recognize, I absolutely recognize that 
this system, these potential rule changes that I'm putting forth, would be complex. And Magic is a complex game already. Um, the uh, rules to um, how commanders interact with graveyard exile, um, hand and library things, those have all changed substantially and aren't like written on the card and aren't always um, intuitive, right? It used to be that the only time you could put a commander into the command zone was if it were go if it would go to the grave or to exile, I believe. You could put it in the command zone. However, if it was put back in your hand or put into your library, it was just put there. You had no uh, no say. That's why cards like Spell Crumble uh, used to be heavily played. That's no longer the case. Now a commander going literally anywhere, you can replace it and put it in the command zone. Even if it's going to your hand, you'd be like, yeah, I don't want this in my hand. Go to the command zone. Right. Um, so EDH already has, excuse me, commander already has complicated rules. And you might think that, like, you know, this is not as complicated. It's inherent to the format. It's a format that was created by people. You can change whatever you want about it. If, if, if the rules committee decided tomorrow that the life totals actually should be 35 instead of 40, that would be the case. Because it's, it's a format created by people. And for what it's worth, if you and your playgroup, once again, going back to rule zero, if you and your playgroup want to have your life total start at 35 so that um, aggressive strategies can be more uh, more present, there's there's literally nothing wrong with that. No one is stopping you. No no uh, uh, no rules committee angel is going to come down on high from on high and say, no, you cannot do this. I rebuke you in your EDH decks. Like, that's not going to happen. But then we get to Query's question. What am I thinking about cards that cost colorless? The thing is, we all accept generic mana is generic mana. It can be any mana and therefore it is nothing. We don't care. Colorless mana is not a color of mana. So you can't really say that it needs the color identity colorless. But I do think it would be interesting if it was treated as its own color for the purpose of color identity. Now, again, I don't think that's, this would affect that much, and I should, I, I need to reiterate, I'm speaking only about the diamond, the, the colorless mana symbols, right? Generic cards, so, uh, um, what is a good example? Uh, Threatened Dynamo, right? Threatened Dynamo taps for colors, colors, but doesn't have colors in its cost. Cause like requires colors. That said, uh, I don't care about this one nearly as much. I think it's fine um, for colorless cards to be played in, in any color combination, frankly. Um, I just think it would be funny if it was treated that way. That's that's literally it. The the issue is that if you if you do if you do the whole like cause like um, colorless is its own color identity thing, then like the fact that Thran Dynamo and Soul Ring and its ilk um, create colorless mana that does become a bit of an issue. Specifically with some cards we'll talk about later. But I did want to mention this. I don't think that it's... Honestly, I think... So so far, I think I, I like all the changes I've talked about, obviously. I think hybrid... Kitchen Fink style hybrid should be should be allowed and should be fine. Uh, Garrick, in my, in my estimation, only the front side should really matter. Um, unless the back side is creating... It, 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 unless the back side, essentially, has monocolored rules text. So, for example... If Garrick the Veilcursed had a, a a plus one ability that said add green and black to your mana pool, I would then say shouldn't be allowed mono green because it has that that rules text. If it said add green slash black, aka add Golgari to your mana pool, I would be fine with it because it's we're still operating under the hybrid system, which brings me to Alesha. Alesha shouldn't be allowed in mono red decks because she has at least white or black in her mana cost. And this is where I understand it gets incredibly convoluted. Why shouldn't Alesha just be able to be in a mono red deck? You, you talked about the mana cost with Garrick. She's, you only have to cast red for her. But if we remove the rule about mana costs 
in the um, in the uh, the rules text, I think it does become a little bit much. So why I don't think Alesha should be allowed in a mono red deck, I think she should be allowed in just a Boros deck or just a Rakdos deck or any combination therein, thereof, whatever. It gets really messed up. If, however, it was a you may pay this is just a white symbol and this is just a black symbol, then I think that she would have to be in a Mardu plus uh, color identity. I understand the notion that this is complex, but I assure you the reason we might think it's complex is because it would be a departure from what we have now that is additive. We would have to add rules, essentially. Um, I, I guess technically not. We just modify the color identity rules. Um, but it would it would be second nature as soon as as soon as you get used to it. What about El Joshi Displacer? This is an interesting one because it works back in with causal action. <laughs> so if if you're and this is this is one of the big reasons. I, like when I was thinking of what about causal, like what about colorless cards? Um, when I was thinking about that, I was like, oh right, what about El Joshi Displacer? Because this is a this is a mono white card. But if if we had this being a colorless identity and a white identity, then this card couldn't be played in the 99, right? Because then it would need a white identity commander that also is a colorless identity commander. So this is just, essentially, this is just like the direct negation for Kozilek, like for colorless being um, its own thing. <laughs> it, it just leads to weird things like this, right? And then the last thing I want to talk about was Talisman of Hierarchy. Um, some of the... Uh, potential issues that people will have with cards like Alesha um, being played in uh, like a Boros only deck, for example, is that people will say, well, why can't I just play um, all 10 talismans in my monocolored deck? My rebuttal is obviously, well, this has a straight up black man symbol in it, not a white, or not an Orzov, Orzov symbol, as a straight up black mana symbol, and therefore would need to be in a black centric deck. Obviously, it has a colorless mana symbol, which is why colorless can be by itself. Um, but yes, we, we essentially would say, you can't play this in your mono white deck because it has black in it. You're like, well, Alesha has black in it as well. No, she has Orzov. This, it's, it's a different symbol. It's a different symbol. She is guaranteed red because of the, the red symbol, the red symbol. And when you are creating the deck and you're presenting your deck, you get to essentially choose is the white part of a symbol or is the black or both? It can be both, but you can say like, Hey, uh, I'm playing a Boros Alesha deck. Uh, the, her, her, her card essentially says you may pay white, white. Cause fundamentally, remember, this is how wizards wanted the cards to be used for hybrid. It's they wanted them to essentially be, this can be played with both or just mono from one of them. Essentially they're saying Alesha could be a Rakdos card or she could be a Boros card. Both of those, like, both of those printings would be absolutely legitimate, as e legitimate as each other. Although, for what it's worth, I do believe Wizard has said that some hybrid cards are more one color than the other, but they would still be allowed as those hybrid cards. So, once again, an Alesha, whose mana cost is red, could be printed with two white pips in her rules text or two black pips in her rules text. Both of those would have been equally printable and reasonable and that's why i think it should be allowed whereas talisman of hierarchy shouldn't be allowed your mono white deck because it has this this straight up black mana symbol so this was another one of these uh kind of weird uh videos i'm hoping it prompts a little bit of discussion in the comments uh what other types of edh kind of discussion things do you uh, would you like me to uh, talk about uh, i'm hoping that next week will be a deck tech followed by um, a gameplay followed by a deck tech followed by a gameplay but obviously things will have to change based on the availability of people and cards so yeah uh, let me let me know what you all think uh, i'd like to remind everyone i have a p.o box you can send me hilarious things there uh i didn't actually mean to cough like for nudge nudge things i i, I coughed because i coughed Anyway, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons for their continued support, especially Fogwin, Malik, and Balotair. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And of course, until next time, I'll be one.